Welcome back, everyone. It's such a blessing to be with you today. And we're going to be taking calls, so pick up that phone, dial that number, because you're going to get to talk to two doctors today. We're so excited to have Dr. Michael Scarborough with us today. He's fellowship trained in cardiovascular anesthesiology and has been practicing for 28 years in the Seattle Tacoma, Washington area. He's also the founder of Sport Science Nutrition and is an expert in the field of nutrition for athletes. He's an avid cyclist himself. And Dr. Scarborough's mission today is to help everyone, not just athletes, improve or maintain our muscle mass as we age. And you should know, Michael is my big brother. It's so much fun to have him here with us to meet all of you. I've got to tell you, you know there were four children in our family. He was the oldest, therefore he had to put up with all the younger siblings. He had to take yeah. care of me through thick and th thin, boyfriends, <laughs> work in the family, you know how it is, sibling rivalry. Oh, we never had that, did we? Never. Never. <laughs> it is so good. To, you know, I'd shake your hand, but that's weird to shake my brother's hand. Well, I'd give him a kiss, hand. but I can't reach it. Thank you for joining us, <laughs> Good to have you here. Good to have it's you great here. to be here. <clears throat> Dr. Scarborough, yeah. we learned that the typical man, as he goes into his older years, his senior years, the average man loses 22 pounds of muscle, and the average woman loses 11 pounds of muscle. What is that phenomenon? What, what, what do you call that? What causes? Let's start talking about it. What is that, right. that muscle mass loss? Well, the age-related loss of muscle mass is, the medical term is sarcopenia. Okay. And that's just derived from Greek terms that basically yeah. means loss of muscle. Sarco, sarco pertains to the functional unit of the muscle. Penia means absence of? Loss of. Loss, yes. of, loss of muscle. Yes. Amazing. Now, is that inevitable? Is that, the, is that guaranteed to happen? Let's put it, if I do nothing, will mm -hmm. it happen to me, other than my usual routine? It's part of aging, okay. and so it does happen to everyone. You um, like wrinkles and gray hair? It, it happens, It yes. happens to everyone. Absolutely. Okay. How can you tell if you're developing this sarcopenia? Well, you're going to have some signs of weakness, okay. uh, and there's ways we can test for that. Uh, there's both... You know, the hard scientists, when they're looking to an epidemiologic studies, they're going to have specific criteria, but uh -huh. you at home, uh, and you just want to know uh, how fast you walk. Gait speed is one method uh, that's okay. used both clinically as well as you, something you can do it yourself. Uh, people who walk less than about 0.8 meters per second, they do okay. have a little, if you have a, over four meter course, uh -huh. uh, and, or if you can't walk, uh, say, 400 meters, maybe a city block or so, yeah. uh, and it takes you more than six minutes, then you probably have uh, muscle weakness that's significant. So if you've noticed your gait is mm -hmm. slowed considerably, can't keep up with other family members, mm -hmm. it's just, it, that's a classic sign, right? Absolutely. Okay, okay. Getting up out of a chair, climbing stairs. Oh, yeah. Getting up out of a chair would be a problem then. Yes. Let me ask you this. You're an anesthesiologist. If someone comes in needing your services, let's say mm -hmm. they need a coronary artery bypass surgery or something, mm -hmm. and they have sarcopenia, what mm -hmm. red flags would that signal to you? Well, probably poor nutrition, number yeah. one. Uh, and it means they've probably had a long pattern of um, a sedentary lifestyle. Uh -huh. Because those are two elements that we can do something about. I mean, certainly age has its effects on us, things that we don't have a lot of control of. However, the things that we can do something about can really change the course of development of muscle loss. When we understand that and we look at the population today, when as many as 30% of people over 60 have significant muscle loss, that uh -huh. produces effects in their life. And maybe as much as 50% at the age of 80, we know that it's a very widespread problem, but it doesn't have to be that way. W would sarcopenia in that surgical case we were mm -hmm. talking about, would mm -hmm. that person be at higher risk of complications and maybe a poor outcome of the surgery? Well, that would be related really to the, what we might call comorbidities or other diseases yeah. that they have that are related to uh -huh. the sarcopenia. The sarcopenia itself just puts them in a condition where they're not going to heal as, as well 
after surgery. Okay. So any kind of surgery for that matter uh, is a stress and the body uh, has to adapt and it uses amino acids. It, all the cells in our body need amino acids. Right. And because muscles are more than just for moving, they're really our body's reservoir, mm -hmm. our depot of the storage of four amino acids. So when we have surgery and we have to heal, the body needs those amino acids. And where does it get them? It gets them from that reservoir. I see. And so when your muscle mass is diminished, healing so will take longer. I was reading some of the research you, you gave to me to prepare for this show. Mm. And I read that a senior can lose 5% of their muscle mass a day when bed can find after an operation. Yeah. So Day? here's the scenario. Yeah. If you have sarcopenia to begin with and you have a major operation and you're confined to bed for say a week or something, right. you can end up profoundly weak. Yes. Yeah. This is not good. No. Well, it's the same thing that we see in individuals who say are weak. Um, they have trouble just walking around. They have a fall. Oh, yeah. And maybe they break their hip. And sometimes that's and just enough. And then they're in bed for a long time yes, too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because the very conditions that led to that fall put them in a position where it's harder to heal, harder yeah. to respond to, to that kind of stress in their life. Yeah. Uh, is this because we're not exercising enough, not eating right? Oh, now you mentioned it's part of aging, but Let's say, well, I don't want sarcopenia to happen to me. Right. I am going to exercise, and it's not going to happen. <laughs> Is that going to help me enough? Is it enough to do that? Well, not by itself. I, I think that um, exercise is probably the best thing you can possibly do. Yeah, and it's important. it is probably the uh, most important element of, well, we think of uh, the balance in our muscles, and there's things that, will degrade muscle protein and there's things that will add to muscle protein. So we call the things that take it away uh, catabolic right. influences, okay. those that add to it, make you stronger, anabolic. And so we can talk about a lot of different factors. Some, it, it, our muscles are kind of like a, um, like a checking account, if you will. Yeah. There's things, uh, our bodies need the amino acids. Our muscles are part of that reservoir mm -hmm. and so it's a normal process for the body to get amino acids from the muscles on a daily basis. And then, of course, we feed ourselves, replace those essential amino acids. Um, and if our net amount is positive, in other words, the amount of protein we're taking in, we maintain the muscle mass or even improve mm -hmm. that, we're in a positive balance. And when we're in a situation where the negative influences or the things that continually draw on that bank account, right. uh, we find ourselves gradually over time losing muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where we become more subject to uh, other influences of disease, our immune system, uh, our risk for falls, everything uh, is all related to how healthy our muscles are. Is there a certain age that this starts? Like, is it in our 20s, 30s, mm. 40s? Is it anyone who doesn't exercise? Or is there any certain point in our adult life that we should really say, wait a minute, I need to start exercising because right. I need to keep my muscles strong? Well, it's a good question. Uh, it's interesting when you look at professional athletes. Mm -hmm. When do you see uh, professional athletes start to retire? Right, right. When does that happen? Between 30 and 40. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Depending and on how great they are to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, you know, there's not very many who are able to continue on at a very high level past the age of 40. Yeah. There are a few, mm -hmm. uh, but all of us are subject to a decline in muscle mass. It occurs at a rate of about 0.5 to 1% per mm -hmm. year. That's the norm. 0.5 to 1% per, per year. Per year, beginning in our 30s, yeah. and certainly by age 40, yeah. and continues throughout life and accelerates at an even yeah. faster p pace once we're in our 60s, 70s, and 80s. Okay. Folks, when we return from these important messages, let's ask Dr. Mike if there's a way to help maintain this muscle mass. Because I want to stay strong for as long as possible, and I know you do too. We'll be right back.